Recorded is rolling. So it's Tuesday, August 16th. Uh, yesterday we did some algebra recap. Uh, today I'm going to do uh, trigonometry with, uh, with you guys, show you guys what the application is to physics. Okay. And then, uh, well, tomorrow we're doing all this stuff. Uh, let's see where we are by end of tomorrow. So you guys all have a page that looks like this. You guys got this page? Right. Hey, do you guys see a right triangle? Uh, and it's got some sides labeled, some angles. Uh, so we got X, Y, and Z on this triangle. There's an alpha and a beta. Okay. And also a right angle. Right. Now, we're really going to focus on uh, right angle uh, triangles for uh, for today. Um, and even if you have a triangle that's not doesn't have this nice 90 degree angle in it, uh, you can always divvy it up into smaller triangles where you know, th there are um, uh, right triangles in it. Right. So you can break it down until um, it's going to fit the math that the guys can do that. Okay, so uh, do you guys right here, um, before I go into the hard math, I want you to uh, connect this to uh, the applications uh, that are in, in physics. So um, you guys remember, I, I'm just uh, going to refer to this packet. You guys remember the packet has like uh, all the summary stuff on it. Right? And one of these has a bunch of variables and units. And on the back side of the page of the variables and units all the way to the bottom, has a couple of definitions. There's a scalar and a vector. So scalar quantities and vector quantities. These are two different categories of uh, physical quantities that you guys are gonna see in this class. Now, anything that's a scalar just has some associated magnitude. I gave you guys a bunch of examples. These aren't all of them, but these are just a list of examples. It's like mass, like how massive is something, right? Like how much matter, how much inertia does it have? Like this is one kilogram of mass. If this is floating around in the International Space Station, is it still one kilogram of mass? Yeah. Yeah, now, now it has, um, right. Um, so uh, how about um, how about speed, like the speedometer in your car? Uh, or, um, you know, what I should put on this list too is volume. I think volume is a really good example. Things that have a magnitude, but they don't have necessarily an associated direction, or, or sometimes they sort of do, but it's, um, it's not like a three-dimensional spatial direction, like time, and you could say, well, time can go like forwards or backwards, but that, that's considered to be a scalar, so put that in the scalar list, okay? Uh, so I think they have some kind of uh, magnitude, but the one below it, you can see it says vector. Uh, these are the ones we're gonna care about today, right? So vector quantities that don't just have a magnitude, like, like some number associated with them, but also have a, like some kind of spatial direction. And here is a whole list of uh, uh, vector quantities. And so displacement, like if you go northeast, like so many degrees, I, I walked three meters, like 16 degrees east of north. Okay, so, okay, so I have the magnitude, but also the direction. Uh, velocity, uh, now you might look at the, it's sort of fair, like, hey, uh, look at displacement versus distance, it's sort of the definition thing, right? Same thing with velocity versus speed, right? So velocity doesn't, just contain speed. It's also direction that matters. And this is going to be important as we go on. Right? So like, what if you're in a boat crossing a river and you're paddling one direction, but the river current's pushing you a different direction, right? Uh, you might have to know directions to know like where you're going relative to say a tree on the bank, right? That's that's like velocities, right? Uh, oh, like, like forces, right? If you're pushing things around, right? Um, yeah, so these are all examples of things that have uh, where direction also matters, right? Uh, so, um, again, uh, before I get to this pure math uh, type page, uh, let's look at some physics uh, sort of examples. Okay? You guys see this plane right here? Let's say the plane is flying straight north. So up it's like north on the page, right? Okay? Let's say this plane is flying straight north at um, 100 meters per second. Okay? Hey, meters per second, is that kind of like miles per hour, like distance per time? Except in this class, we're going to tend to use this as a block of units, like meters per second. Uh, now, if you were to watch the shadow of the plane on the ground, would that also be going north, 100 meters per second? Sure. Right? Uh, but what if the the, the plane uh, really only know what like, knows to anthropomorphize this plane? What's going on relative to the air around it? Well, what if the whole pocket of air is like moving to the east at the same time? What if the air is moving to the right, uh, like eastward? Or should, should say eastward. Uh, let's say also at 100 meters per second. Do you think the plane is going north and also being pushed east at the same time? What's the shadow of the plane on the ground doing? Is it going straight northeast? You guys think straight northeast? Huh. Uh, so, um, it, in fact, the plane's always going north, the wind's always blowing east. See how I've connected these two vectors, like tip to tail? Right? And that, that's, a, that's a vector term, it's called tip to tail, tip to tail connection. So if you start from the tail of the very first vector, and there's only two vectors here, right? The 
plane velocity and the wind velocity, I'm adding them together geometrically. Uh, but but if I had like 10 defectors, you could go tip to tail all the way along. Back down. Where's yeah. I've already got a printed example for you guys, right? You guys see all this like tip to tail connection and dash vectors creates creates this resultant. Ooh, okay. To go from the tail of the first one to the tip of the very last one. And that will tell you what the plane is actually doing relative to the ground. So here's the plane relative to the air. Here's the air relative to the ground. That plus that gives you the plane relative to the ground. I'm going to call that the resultant uh, vector. And the resultant can tell you two things. It can tell you the magnitude of the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. That's to say the speed, the speed of the shadow across the ground, and also the direction. Okay? So let, let, let's get both of those. Uh, I bet you guys can tell me how fast, who, who can tell me, how fast is the plane's shadow moving across the ground? It's not 100 meters per second. It's what? Who knows it? Uh, yeah, what's here, Jackson? Is it the um, square root of 100? The square root of? Uh, Wait. 141? Oh, Elijah, in for the win, 141 meters per second. How'd you get it? How'd you know 141 meters per second? Uh, I know that's where it is 1.4. Ah, that's a pretty good one, right? Yeah. Oh, so you recognize this is like 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, yeah, 45, 45, 90, right? Th th that's a good thing to know, right? Um, yeah, square, square root of 2 is 1.41, right? Yeah. All right, so how about Pythagorean theorem? You guys know Pythagorean theorem, right? All right, so uh, as long as you have a right triangle, this works for right triangles. Right? C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Right, where the two sides are A and B, and then the resultant is side C. Right, that be true. Right, so uh, how, how about this? Um, uh, ooh, you know what? We're bringing more ink colors today. Ah, uh -huh, I did. Got more colors. So with the pink game. So if I take this side and I physically square it off into a square, let's pretend that's a square, right? And I take this one on the left side. I ran out of paper a little bit, but. Okay, so it's a square that sends off the paper a little bit. Okay. And I take this resultant. Turn this into a giant square. Okay. Uh, would you guys believe that this square plus this square is equal to the area of that big old square right here? That's exactly what the Pythagorean theorem says. If you uh, solve for C, which is like the resultant, right? You get C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now it's solved in terms of variables. So now I'll just pop in some numbers. Uh, and you can try this if you if you like on your calculator that you have it on your desk. You can go 100 meters per second, square that. 100 meters per second, square that. Oh, you said 20,000 because you're saying like square root of 20,000. All right, all right, right. Yeah, square root of 20,000. That should give you 141 point something meters per second. That's the now that's the speed of the plane shadow across the ground. Now velocity isn't just speed, it's also direction because it's a vector quantity. So the last thing you got to get is uh, to actually define fully the velocity is this angle right here. I'll call it theta. That's pretty common. Okay. Now that angle theta, uh, but you guys probably know it just looking at the geometry of the triangle. What, what angle is that, Stu? Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, so it is squared here. 100 meters per second being squared is meters squared per second squared? Yeah. And then that meters squared per second squared, that meters squared per second. Oh, whoops, whoops, yeah. whoops. Get rid, get rid of this. Oops. Yeah, that was supposed to be 100 meters per second. Typo. Yeah, good, good catch there. Right. And then when you square root, it, it turns back into meters per second. Okay. Yeah, okay. But, but I did have a typo here, so that was just supposed to be meters per second. Okay. Um, yeah, so guys, what, what's this angle equal to? 45 degrees? You can tell just by looking at it, right? But what if uh, what if this was not 100 and 100 very nicely? What if this was like 100 meters per second and like 83 meters per second? Ooh, now what? Okay. Do you guys know how to extract the single theta? Oh, yeah. Okay, it is related to Sokotoa. So, oh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. Let, let, let's go down to Sokotoa. Let's review all that stuff. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I'll show you guys how to extract an angle if you know sides. Okay. Right, because here's here's like the big picture I get. If you know enough information about a triangle, you can figure out everything about a triangle, right? Um, so yeah, let's go. So, uh, Toa. 
and this is this is an acronym, uh, an acronym like a mnemonic device, right? So you tell you what sine, cosine, and tangent stand for, like these keys on the calculator, sine, cosine, and tangent. And they represent certain ratios on a triangle. And then, then we'll go back and figure out, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go back to that example in a couple of other examples too, but it's going out there. So if I have theta, uh, let's say um, I have to label some sides. So right here, how about this? I'm just going to call this hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Okay. Okay. So relative to this angle. Okay. Now notice I, I could see, I could have picked this angle in the top right corner. That's the other acute angle. Right. Besides, of course, the 90 degree guy. Okay. Right. So once I have my defined angle, one of the legs is opposite, they're not touching the angle at all. And the other leg is, is touching the angle. So, so it's a, that's why it's adjacent, right? Like next door neighbor. Okay. Then we got the hypotenuse, which is, of course, the longest side, opposite of the 90 degree guy. Okay. So sine of that angle, right? it's, like, it's like a function that's defined as uh, opposite divided by hypotenuse. Opposite divided by hypotenuse. Uh, cosine of the angle is defined as adjacent divided by hypotenuse, right? It's this ratio, okay? adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle is defined as opposite over adjacent. Okay, right, guys good? Okay, All right, now this hopefully you guys remember from like math class, like pre or trade, okay? What I'm going to do, with guys, is let's rearrange these uh, to get on how uh, how you normally use these in physics, how you normally actually apply these in physics. Okay, so this top one, you know, I've got some space right here. Maybe I'll the page. Okay. Uh, this top one here. If I take the hypotenuse and I cross multiply it, could you say if you have the hypotenuse and you multiply by sine of theta, that would give you the opposite side? Would that be true? Right. Okay. And then what if you, uh, same thing with the second line, cross multiply by hypotenuse. If you start with hypotenuse and you multiply by cosine of the angle, that would give you the adjacent leg. Right. Well, why, why am I doing that? Okay. Well, because uh, normally with vectors, let's say you have like a force vector up and to the right. Right. You might want to know like how much up and how much to the right. So you have to split it into components. And this, th these two lines right here, uh, you're going to be using over and over and over this class so much, but they're just rearrangements of the notes on the left that you learn straight from the math class, right? right. It, 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 so the two formulas that I boxed in there, you're going to use so many times to split components into vectors. So if you like push up into the right, now it's going to be split up. Like how much up and how much to the right? Well, you know the angle. Ah, so that's normally what you know. You normally know the magnitude that you're like pushing, for example, if it's a force, right? And the angle that's at. Okay. Get this to uh, now this third one can do something a little bit different with. Um, th th there's lots of ways to go with this, but I'm just going to truncate this down to like, boy, this kind of the like, super essential stuff. No, okay. um, now, you could cross multiply adjacent and get adjacent times tangent theta is equal to opposite. And that's totally true. Uh, but uh, I want to do a little bit different perspective, which is remember that question of like, how do you know what the angle is? Theta. Okay. Now, theta, you can get, uh, what, see, what if you start off knowing a bunch of side information and you want to figure out what is theta? You have to apply not a trig, but an inverse trig. So I'm going to do inverse tan. You could always also do this with sine or cosine, but um, teach this to you guys here today. Okay. Inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Okay. Right, so, so then now you know how to get angles. Right? Okay. So uh, short summary down here in say the space. I got um, if you take some trig function of an angle, it'll spit you out a ratio. Right? It's like some defined ratio that the calculator has memorized, right? And there's like some crazy like formula that, but we'll, we'll just, it, it's sort of the calculator and it's not get it. Right? Uh, if you take an inverse trig of a ratio, that will spit you out an angle. Okay, let's that. Oh, um, let, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it one, with one that you already know the answer to, which is this one here. You guys already told me this is a 45 degree angle, right? Right. Let's let's see if this actually works. Right? This, this one right here. Now, if that's true, um, see, relative to the single theta, isn't this 100 meters per second opposite? And this 100 meters per second is adjacent? Is it? 
So um, now I, I don't want to do tangent. I want to do inverse tan. So see the set the key says second, and then tan. If you say second tan, see where it says tan minus one. Now that's, that's just notation for uh, for inverse tan. Okay. Sometimes it's also called arc tan, uh, which is also the uh, the key you use in uh, Microsoft Excel. If you type a t a n, it will automatically do this function. I want to do opposite over adjacent. Right? You guys see this? Okay. Now as long as the calculator is in degrees and not radians, then it should say 45 to represent 45 degrees. Let's see if that's true. Oh, 45 degrees at that angle. Aha, ah, ah. All right, guys good? Okay. Uh, how about this? Uh, do, do you think I need to do inverse sine playing off these two lakes and also get 45 degrees? Let's try that. What is inverse sine of this opposite divided by this uh, hypotenuse? Okay, so 100 over 141. It's like 141.4 something. So it's rounded a little bit. This may not be exactly 45, it should be pretty close to 45. 45 degrees, right? Inverse sine of this over this, right? How about inverse cosine this over this? Do the same thing? Inverse cosine 100 over 141, 45, well, 45 degrees. Right? Okay, you guys good so far? Okay. Um, any questions so far? All right. Um, I've got a couple of examples uh, lined up, get, get you guys thinking and um, make some physical connections. So let's say I got a bunch of bananas uh, and a couple of monkeys and they're pulling on these bananas. Can you see like a tension force here and a tension force here? They're both pulling on the bananas. Would you guys say just glancing at it, that there's going to be a net force on those bananas and they're about to be moving? Okay. Uh, actually, furthermore, a few weeks from now, I'll talk about they're not just going to move, they're going to accelerate, right? So if you put a force on, I think it's, I think it's second law on this poster. If you put, put a force on something and if you push on it, it will cause it to not just move, but to actually like speed up moving, like change its velocity. Okay, but getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Okay. Uh, now, where would you put a third monkey to tie a third rope? So uh, a third monkey could pull and maybe hold the bananas in equilibrium so that maybe there's zero net force. Maybe there's kind of kind of hang out there. Uh, do you guys want to put the mon third monkey, wh wh which quadrant? Quadrant one, two, three, or four? What do you guys say? Yeah, definitely quadrant one, right? So yeah, just, just kind of eyeballing it. Maybe uh, put a third monkey like right about here. A little monkey tail, okay. and maybe he's pulling on a rope this way. Okay. I'm gonna make this like a vector. See, see I'm drawing like uh, arrow arrowheads on on these guys. Okay. So those could all be vectors. Right? Guess that vector, vector, vector. Okay. Force. Uh, maybe, hey, maybe like a tension force it could be a vector quantity, right? As a magnitude and direction. Magnitude is how hard they're pulling. The direction is well, it's like angles and stuff, right? Uh, you guys see how I already have some dashed lines here. Right. So I've got this Cartesian plane going on. Now, of course, in real life, you know Cartesian plane grounds, but but you can make one up and you can really orient it however you want to it's just like made up but okay. here's what i want you guys to see great right. takeaway is if i split this into components now uh let's go purple one that's splitting component okay. do you guys think that the up parts have to cancel with the down parts and the right part has to cancel with the left part part to get to equilibrium hmm okay let's think about how that would work okay. so i'm gonna leave this one straight down just exactly as is because it's already aligned to this uh, like made a coordinate system. But these two guys thought at angles, I'm going to split those into components. Okay. Now, uh, since you guys are in AP, um, especially uh, if you ever do components, definitely make sure to dash them. Uh, AP, how, how they grade the exam, uh, if you ever do like solid lines, they'll definitely count off. Uh, if you do dashed, uh, if, if they're generous, they'll give you the points, but they usually don't like you to do components. But this is definitely something you have to do, at least in your mind. And on all the homework and stuff, just go ahead and draw a bunch of dash components like this. See, if you do solid lines, the problem with that is that you're double representing the vectors. So if I did those to solid, solid, I'd be saying, oh, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vectors, but there's only three, right? There's just the, the tension forces, just those three. Okay. But now, see, what I'm doing is I'm replacing these original up to the right, up to the left in terms of how much up to the uh, up and to the right, how much up and to the left. Right? You guess that? Okay. And I could have gone the way I draw it, but I also could have gone like up first and then over. You, you, you guys see I'm just like splitting into components. Okay. Ah, do you guys see how like this to the right and this to the left are canceling each other out? You guys see that? And you guys see how if you add up these two upward short bits, they pretty well cancel out with this one down. Like this plus this up cancels with this guy down. You guys see that? Okay. Um, in fact, I, I could uh, 
we'll, we'll just pop in some numbers. Oh, I'm going to keep the numbers real basic um, in a way that I know this is going to work out. What if this guy's pulling down with, um, let's say, 100 newtons of force? Um, but by the way, just for just for context, this one kilogram weighs. There's a there's a gravity force going down on this. That's it's like 9.8 newtons, so it's really close to 10 newtons. You can think about this as a 10 newton weight, as, as long as you're at surface level. So maybe like this guy's pulling with like 100 of those, or say 10 of those, I should say. Okay. Okay. Uh, but let's say they're all pulling with 100 newtons. 100 newtons, 100 newtons, they're equally strong monkeys. Okay. And I'm going to tell you this angle is 30 degrees, and this angle is 30 degrees. Okay, you guys see that? Okay. All right. So uh, let's let's follow that, uh, that Sokotoa stuff. That I was just telling you guys about all uh, follow these boxes because these two boxes. This is how you take the original hypotenuse and split it into components, right? Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. So, what is uh, uh how, how do you figure out this right here? This is what times what? A hundred times sine of thirty degrees because it's opposite opposite sine, right? So this is mm, now I've run there. 100 newtons times sine of 30 degrees, right? And what does that come out to? 50, exactly, 50 newtons, right? Oh, do you think this is the exact same geometry over here? 100 times sine of 30 degrees, which would be 50 newtons. That be true? Okay. How about this component right here? What times what? Yeah, exactly, 100 newtons. Times cosine of 30 degrees. Okay. Oh, uh, I should let you guys know when I put the unit underneath the number, that's, that's just a Griffin thing. Um, I just do it just to keep the keep the numbers kind of clean. You know, so it's so, like, okay, see all the math here, and then underneath it's okay. Well, there's a unit attached to that number there. Okay. But if, if you type it out, you just put it next to the number. Right. And that, uh, what does that come out to? It's like, is it 86 point something? Yeah, 86. 86.6. 86. That sounds right. 86.6 newtons. Do you guys think that this is the same geometry to the right? 86.6 newtons. Okay. And do one more thing, uh, which is uh, apply a positive and negative directions. Let's call up positive and to the right positive. And if that's true, this is positive 50. Um, this is positive 86.6. But this would have to be negative 86.6. Okay. Uh, oh, this would still be positive 50 up. And this would be actually negative 100 newtons down, for that be true? Okay. And then, so all the ones I circled, um, well, most of those are components. The, the one that's straight down is, is a pure um, uh, tension force, but these four guys are all components, right? Okay. You guys see the right and left cancel out, and the 50 plus 50 up, and the 100 down also cancels out? Ah, so what's the net force on those bananas? Mm -hmm. Zero, ah, right, you guys see that? Okay. How about this? Um, some of you guys might be engineers one day, you guys think you uh, might be designing some bridges? Right, so I just sketched this one up. Do you guys think that at every single nodal point, like for example, that one just to pick a random point, right? uh, do, do you think some of these uh, truss beams might be in tension and some of these might be in compression? Right? Whole things like made out of steel or something. And do you think that the net force has to be zero at every single point on that uh, on that stable structure? Yeah, in fact, there's a whole college class you can take called statics where they just do like analysis like that. Okay. Um, it, okay, so you guys, uh, any questions so far? Let's try. All right, so you guys ready for this page? All right, so I've got 10 different triangles here. Well, they all sort of generically refer to this, this right angle triangle here. But notice how I drew this triangle, right? Okay, so I've got the sides X and Y are the legs, Z is like the, the, the actual vector, but X and Y, they're dashed. See how they're like dashed like that? Ah, because it, um, because it looks like there's like some vector up to the right. Maybe it's a force vector. Maybe it's a velocity vector. Maybe it's a momentum vector. It'd be uh, maybe this is a displacement vector. Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you can break this down into components and say how much to the right and how much up. And that's what X and Y are. Okay. Uh, now there's a right angle there that's labeled right angle. Okay? And there's also two angles. Now, if there's a single angle we're interested in, I usually just label it theta, right? um, which is exactly what I did, like right here, for example, that's theta. But if there's two angles, um, maybe like alpha and beta can work, right? Alpha and beta. Okay. Right. Now, the idea with the right triangles is if you know enough information, like at least three pieces of information about the triangle, you can get everything else, right? 
well, um, you guys see there's 10 different triangles here, right? Number one, number two, number three, number four, right? And just like popping in random numbers and, and everybody has a different looking page. So there's lots of different versions of this. Okay. Well, I only gave you two pieces of information, but you also know this right angle, which means you have three pieces of information. Once you know three things about a triangle, you can figure out anything about the triangle. Okay. Um, so you, uh, well, no, that, that's, that's not exactly true. Um, I guess if you do like, like three angles, you'd be like, well, how, how big is this? But but then uh, if you do three angles though, that's like sort of like repetitive information because if, if you were given two angles, you would find the third one, right? Guys, any triangle, any flat triangle, what do all the angles add up to? 180 degrees. So really, if you know two, you actually know three, right? Because you just subtract from 180. You guys get that? What, what does this alpha and this beta always add up to given that this is a right triangle? 90. Alpha and beta always add up to 90, right? You guys get that? Okay. Right. So uh, I'm going to pick a couple of ones random here. Uh, how about uh, how about number one? Start off. Right? Now, everybody's numbers are different. Your may or may not look like mine. Right? If alpha then is 30 degrees, what does beta have to be? 60 degrees. Right? In fact, that would be called a what, what, what triangle? 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90. Yeah, it's one of your special right triangles. Right? In fact, one reason it's special, nice to know. You guys just saw one of these before. These monkeys pull these bananas. Ah, it's got a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. Yeah, well, one thing that's nice about 30, 60, 90, 90 triangles is that the short leg compared to the hypotenuse is always a one to two ratio, 50 over 100. Okay. Um, okay, and it looks like I also gave you guys the hypotenuse. Ooh, so what would x be equal to? Okay, well, x could be adjacent to alpha or opposite of beta. You go either way with that. So I could do, I could take my 50 meters, 50 meters, and I could do times. Uh, sine or cosine of alpha to get to x. So it'd be cosine of alpha, right? So cosine of 30 degrees. And that's telling me 43.3 meters. Uh, what if I did it the other way? Let me, let me backtrack. What if I did 50 times sine of 60 degrees? Is that referring to the same side? Sure is, 43.3. Right? It's a different way to get there. Right? It's either adjacent to alpha or opposite of beta, same side. How about side y? Uh, side y is opposite of alpha. So I'm just going to start with my hypotenuse 50 and multiply by sine of alpha, sine of 30 degrees. Oh, well, I could have done that in the math because it's just half the special triangle, right? So 25 meters, right? um, maybe like straight north, if those like northeast coordinates, right? Uh, or um, just for completion here, I could have done. 50 meters times cosine of 60 degrees for that beta angle. Okay. And that's, uh, oh, also 25. Look at that. You guys see that? Okay. Let's do one more on this side here. Uh, uh, question so far? You guys all right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they do. Yeah. So th that'll be a thing throughout this class. A lot of times I, I have a whole folder full of. Page like yeah, I just um, made like a bunch of different versions. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do um, let's do. How about number ten? That's like the last one on this page is probably the most challenging one. Okay, number ten. Okay, okay. So I gave you the hypotenuse and one of the sides. Can you find the other side? Do you think that would be Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, but you have to do a little bit of an math trick with this, right? Check it out. So let's say z squared is x squared plus y squared. Oh, well, you know what? Since you guys are AP, let's solve in terms of variables. Can you solve for x in terms of just x and y? Beat uh, me to the answer. Go ahead, solve for x. But what we did yesterday, right? Give you guys a head start. Beat me to the answer. Did you guys subtract y squared over? z squared minus y, right? Hopefully, beat me to that. All right, is that what you guys got? All right, okay, so everybody beat me to that answer, right? And now that you have a general answer, that should work for everybody's number 10, regardless of what your numbers are. Mine are these numbers, but I'm just gonna pop in some numbers and see what happens. So what's uh, square root of z squared minus y squared. 
Okay, and I'm getting this number right here. Okay. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but um, if you're coming from chemistry, I know on the AP chemistry exam, they're super strict about significant figures, but that's not true on AP physics. So if you're not sure like that, uh, it should be two or three or four digits. Um, just do something that's kind of reasonable. If you have an extra one, then nobody's gonna count it off, including me. Okay. Ah, so we know of all three sides, and we know the fact that it's a right triangle. Uh, how do you solve for alpha? Can I do alpha is, I, I can think of three ways to do it. Um, how about this? Can you do inverse tan of whatever what? Opposite over adjacent. Yep. It's y over x in this case, right? Ah, you guys see that? Okay, let's try that. So I'm gonna get for alpha. What's inverse tan of y over x? All right, I'm getting, well, I'll round it to the nearest degree. I feel like that many degrees. Okay. Hey, if alpha was inverse tan of y over x, do you think beta is inverse tan of x over y? It just change the definition of what opposite was adjacent. Okay, let me try that. Huh. I got this number for beta using that method. Uh, or you may have even more simply just said alpha and beta always have to add up to what? 90 degrees, which in this case they do. Right? I mean, as long as you're talking about a right triangle, the two acute angles should always add up to 90 degrees. Right? Got good so far? Uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Yeah. Are all these like triangles, right triangles? Yes, yes, they're all right triangles. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, you know I mentioned before, and I do want to draw this out for you guys. What if you had a triangle that was not a right triangle, like uh, like that right there? Obviously not a right triangle, right? Okay. But do you think you could always divvy this up into smaller triangles? That there are some right triangles. Ah, you could, and then everything, all, all your right triangle math is whoop, pop right in there. In fact, you can really like like any shape. Um, even if you have like, like a circle, you could divvy it into like a million little triangles. Okay. Um, right. Uh, guys, good to All right. Uh, yes. Let's 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 flip this page over. Okay. And here's the here's the science aspect of this because everything we've done so far is just like pure math. You should know from like a, like a trade class. But science is like uh, measurement, empirical evidence. Uh, you guys got a protractor on your desk? Protractor. Okay. Right. So oh, I got a table and a bunch of triangles. Right. So show you how to navigate this thing. You should have five different triangles. You guys got five triangles. Hey, do you guys see in this table there's five rows? Do you think each row refers to one of the triangles? Like uh I see Maxwell triangle, Maxwell row. Ah, you guys see that? Okay, right. and what about all these columns? We got let's take a look so we know what we're looking at. I see an alpha and a beta measured in degrees. Oh, uh, if you're using a different calculator, make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll probably talk about radians a long, long time from now, but today we're using degrees. Okay. Oh. You know what? Since I'm talking about degrees, or, all right. Um, you guys see that your protractor goes 180 degrees in that semicircle? Right. How many degrees in a full circle? 360? Oh, yeah. You have a fourth protractor. Oh. Um, see that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you okay. Uh, why, um, what, why three sixty degrees? Is that, that that kind of kind of an arbitrary number that we just made up? Right. Like if the uh, like if suppose space aliens land on the Earth tomorrow, like like how do we come from space or what? What do they say? Uh, do you think? I mean, they, they probably know what pi is. They say, oh yes, of course, three point one four one five. Uh, and and they would know what circles are. Do you think they're also using three sixty degrees in a circle? Right. Like aliens from like Alpha Centauri or wherever. Hmm. Probably not 360 degrees. Like it's kind of a made up number, right? Made up standard. Right. So why um uh, where'd that convention come from? Well, nobody knows exactly for sure, but it do you think uh can you guys think of a cyclical number that's very close to 360? 356. 365. 365. Yeah, like days in a year, right? Uh it's probably related to that. Um uh, very old calendars that thousands of years ago. Sometimes they do use like 360 days in a year. Get off a little bit. Okay. Uh, 
also, um, you, you guys know we use the base 10 system, right? So you memorize digits 0 through 9, and then it just rolls over like place value system. That itself is a revolutionary idea to have a place value system. Like, um, you guys know Roman numerals, like I, X is 9, right? Like, nobody uses that because you can't really do like high level math with that. Uh, but uh, there was a, um, but using a base 10, base 10 is kind of arbitrary. I mean, just by the luck of the universe, uh, the whole world is pretty much on a base 10 system. So we're all on the same standard. But uh, ancient Babylonian, so uh, ancient uh, Iraq, uh, they used a base 60 system. So they had 60 individual characters, 0 through 59, before it rolled over. Um, and that uh, they did evenly into, uh, into 360 also. So, uh, so uh, 360 is actually a nice number for a number of reasons. It has a bunch of um, uh, factors you can uh, divide it by. But, but anyway, uh, let's, do, let's do some science here. We're going to do some measuring. Uh, I'm going to pick this Maxwell triangle. You may or may not have Maxwell on your page, but so yeah. And so I'm going to uh, go left to right. Um, now, so, so, oh, I meant to mention this too on this table. Some of these say measure above the table, and some of them say calculate. See, some measure and some say calculate, right? Uh, and if science works, if math works, then everything should align. So if you're referring to like the same leg, whether you calculate it or measure it, you should get kind of the same number, right? So Maxwell triangle, uh, how many degrees is each one of these? Ah, thank you. I got here. Um, see that black pin right there? Uh, grab a protractor, protractor on the pin. Right, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take this node, put it right on this corner where it says alpha. Now I need to zero out this leg. So I need to adjust this protractor a little bit. Ah, uh, right there. Zero out that, that leg. Okay. And then the C side will naturally sweep through um, the, the, well, it actually sweeps, sweeps through two angles, right? Uh, I see it sweeps through 22 degrees and 158 degrees. So which one is correct for alpha? 22. 22. Yeah, because you want to go, well, it's an acute angle. It's definitely less than 90 degrees. So up in Maxwell, I'm going to write 22. Uh, and the angle is already specified as degrees. Um, it was kind of double counting it, but just so it really stands out as an angle. So 22 degrees, right? Uh, or you know what you could have done, and this might have been easier, is to flip the whole thing upside down and measure it um, clockwise. So so take this node of the protractor, pop it right on that corner. This time it zeroed out the hypotenuse, and uh, the shorter leg length sweeps through uh, 22 degrees. 22 degrees, I think. So now uh, one problem you might run into is these triangles are a little bit on the small side. So you can always extend the leg, right? Something like that. So I just took that blue ink and then extended the, the leg. So um, if it doesn't, if, if the protractor is too big or the triangle is too small, ah, well now it's a uh, well, whoops. But like this, now it's working. Okay, twenty-two degrees. I guess that. Hey, if that angle is twenty-two degrees, what should beta be? Sixty-eight. Right. But let's see if that's true. Um, all right, so I'm going to zero out the short leg this time, and the hypotenuse sweeps through. Uh, what am I looking at? Looks like maybe he's, ooh, ooh, I'm looking at like 67, I think. 67? That's what I'm looking at. 67 degrees. Okay. Ah, what are these two angles add up to? 89. Hmm, and they shouldn't have added up to 90. Uh, is that okay? Should, should I should I erase that and say nah, it should, should have been sixty eight, so I'll write sixty eight, or should I stick with my measurement? You can remeasure it. Or, or or yeah, actually I, that's what I should do. It's like like re remeasure, right? But um, yeah. So one thing about a, about science is from uh, from math. If you were in a math class, then you would just uh, you would say, well, these two angles have to add up to ninety degrees, otherwise teacher can count off. But science is different. Science is about what's your actual empirical observation, like regardless of what the theory says it should be. So yeah, so you better off um, stick with your actual observation. I'm going to leave it like that. Oh, or you could remeasure it, like measure it three or four times and then um, or, or do something like that. Okay, but okay, you got to get the idea, right? Okay. Okay. Now, if these two angles do add up exactly to 90 degrees, then uh, down the line, some of these numbers will exactly match up with each other, but I'm, I'm off a little bit, right? Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, you know, like a million things I want to tell you guys, but yeah, okay. Going down the table here. All right. So, 
let's measure the size of this uh, triangle. Uh, what is side C? And we're going to be using centimeters. So we're the unit that specified in centimeters. Like so, are you guys using inches? And you guys use centimeters. Bing. You know, metric system. So side C, which is the hypotenuse. I'm looking at Maxwell. Uh, looking at six point nine centimeters. Point nine centimeters. Uh, the next column over says A, which is in centimeters, but that looks like the short side. So that looks like 2.6, I'm going to call it, 2.6 centimeters. Okay. Now, the next few columns say calculate. I'm going to skip those. Those make sense by the uh, by the end of this. Okay. And then side B is the last measurement I have to do. So what is side B? That looks like 6.4, 6.4 centimeters. Okay. Now, those are all the measurements. Well, I did leave off one column, which was the 90 degree right angle, but you, you guys know all these triangles have a right angle in them. All right. Uh, the last three uh, cell, or, uh, uh, three cells here and three cells here are calculations. Right? Um, this one says C times sine alpha. This says C times cosine beta. Uh, so cosine beta. And uh, hey, it, shouldn't that be that? That reminds me of something. Is that exactly what I had to get boxed in these formulas here? Oh, look at that. Hypotenuse times sine theta, hypotenuse times cosine theta. If you um, you bounce off sine of alpha, that's the opposite side. Hey, that's also side A. And if you start with hypotenuse multiply by cosine of beta, that's adjacent to beta, which is also side A. So shouldn't these two cells also refer to side A, which we already measured? Okay, so we've got a direct measurement. Now we've got ways to calculate it, but they should ideally land pretty close to that number, right? Let's, let's see how close. Let's see how close. So I'm going to take my 6.9 centimeter hypotenuse, multiply it by sine of alpha, which is 22 degrees. Okay. And that's going to give me 2.58. Okay. Uh, centimeters. Ah, that, that pretty much is 2.6. Ah, forget. What if I did 6.9 centimeters times cosine of 67 degrees? Uh, 2.70, it rounds to 2.70. Okay, that's pretty close to 2.7, uh, 2.6. It's extremely close. Uh, and then this last uh, one that sh should also refer to the side, because you guys can see the pattern, right? Do you guys see a very dark uh, rectangle outline around these four columns? Ah, you guys see a, see a pattern here? It says square root of c squared minus b squared. What, what do you think that refers to? The Pythagorean theorem. In fact, you know what? We did that already. Where did we do that? It is the same thing as a. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you guys are on. Um, I just think I wrote it down, but I didn't see it. So we did. Okay. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And you were to solve for a, right? when you subtract b squared over, you get c squared minus b squared is a squared. Therefore, a is equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. Can that be true? Uh, ah, oh, okay. that's exactly what that column's referring to. Okay, so this is the Pythagorean theorem point of view, isn't it? Right? Okay. So let's try it out. Let's do square root of. Uh, 6.9 squared minus 6.4 squared, right? And that's 2.58, right? Ooh, that's, that's also in that ballpark, isn't it? Right. I should tell you guys too, uh, just from experience, I haven't taught this class so many years, uh, if there's any one of these cells or columns that ends up being a bit more off than the other ones, it usually ends up being Pythagorean theorem. So if this came out to like 2.8 or something crazy, but okay, not super surprised, but in this case, it might be really close. All right, how about these last three cells? Let's do uh, C times sine of beta. So 6.9 sine of 67 degrees. Okay. Uh, now, you guys see where this is going, right? So if you start C times sine of beta, sine of beta refers to the flip set opposite of beta, which is the side B. Now, I measured that a minute ago to be 6.4 centimeters. Let's see how close that is. 6.35 centimeters. Ooh, that is extremely close. 
uh, C times cosine of alpha. So you do C times cosine of alpha. Cosine of alpha refers to adjacent to alpha. So that should also refer to the side B. Let's try it out. 6.9 centimeters times cosine of 22 degrees is 6.40. Oh, which is exactly what, what I measured. Okay. And then the last one, the sort of like reverse Pythagorean theorem, square root of C squared minus A squared, which is referred to side B. So C, 6.9, square that, minus A squared, that's 2.6 squared. I hope it's uh, pretty close to 6.4. Let's see how close. 6.39. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So there you go. Uh, now uh, you have a um, way to work your way around the triangle. Right. Uh, you can measure, you can calculate, and then this is shown right here that, yeah. Your math textbook was correct all along. Your math teachers have not been lying to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Can I start it? Uh, all right. Um, hmm. All right. All right. So just a quick video pause and told you guys because uh, I, I have had a lot of plant stuff lined, uh, lined up for you guys, uh, like labs and stuff lined up. but um. And so we get an indication from you guys that if we take the time in class tomorrow to do a bit more practice, also, uh, uh, I guess we can go back and fill in some links from yesterday that I meant, meant to hit. So um, yeah, hang on to this page. Uh, we'll uh, yeah, just got a couple minutes to class today. Uh, we'll, we'll do some more of this uh, tomorrow in class, uh, both sides of the page. And I'll also go back and fill in some details about algebra. And then, uh, yeah, there are some labs I want to be getting to, and uh, we're, we're working our way towards linear motion too. Okay. Oh, hey, I forgot to, I want to do all the, all the science stuff with you guys, so all like initial analysis. Yeah, okay, so that'll be this week. Okay, I'll be right, we're, we're, we're doing all right. We have a pretty good pace here. So, in video, right here.